Uh, finally, we'll uh, do a quick overview of the Maestro Wave, the uh, integrated hydrodynamics. So Maestro um, uses uh, or has three different boundary element methods uh, available. There's the 3D panel method, uh, a 2D strip theory, uh, and a 2.5D strip theory. Uh, Maestro can do both, a Maestro Wave can do both frequency domain and time domain analyses. Uh, in the frequency domain, uh, you'll get the you know, motions, hull girder loads, panel pressures. Uh, it will create uh, the response amplitude operators for uh, that unit wave, uh, unit wave database, uh, which can then be used to um, run the extreme load analysis and spectral fatigue analysis to generate sort of the, the lifetime um, evaluations for extremes and fatigue. Uh, in the time domain side, it uses a weekly nonlinear implementation um, for the, the time domain analysis. And this can be run on both regular and irregular waves. And uh, with the lifetime extreme or the extreme lifetime design waves, what you can do is run a, obviously you're not going to run a time domain long enough until you encounter the expected lifetime extreme. But from a, a uh, from the extreme load analysis in the frequency domain, you can identify the speed, heading, wave height, modal period uh, associated with that lifetime extreme and run a time domain analysis in those conditions uh, for say a half hour or an hour. Um, but then you identify the largest event from that limited time domain run and uh, you can scale up the results to achieve a similar load uh, to the lifetime extreme, but with a more realistic load pattern uh, that's based on the uh, time domain or time domain solution. Uh, the, the time domain uh, runs also support um, computation of whipping and slamming. Uh, some of the features are that the equations of motions are, are based on the uh, structural mesh. Um, so again, we, we only have that single mesh, which is uh, a very nice feature of this integrated uh, hydro package. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the restore and correction uses quadratic programming. Uh, the fact that this is all integrated using the same, uh, same mesh allows for a very seamless transfer of loads. So you don't have um, some of the interpolation error that you might have with uh, using an external code and trying to map it to this mesh. Uh, the, because it's all done internally and on the same mesh, um, we're able to achieve equilibrium without the use of the inertial relief forces. Um, and uh, just in, in summary, you know, it's a very robust and unique solution for hydrodynamic loadings uh, or hydrodynamic loading uh, with FEA for ships. And um, as mentioned, also supports the you know, computation of the, the lifetime extremes and the uh, uh, high fidelity spectral fatigue analysis for the ship. And this is, you know, the, and the uh, spectral fatigue is done for all elements throughout the entire vessel. I guess in terms of how it works, one of the, the two main things that you would need for running uh, the um, ELA and SFA would be you know, the wave scatter diagram for where the, the vessel might be operating. And this is simply just a chart uh, indicating the probabilities of the, the wave height and modal period in that region. And then an operating profile for the ship. Um, which uh, might be, you know, uh, it, if, you, if you don't have uh, a, a good definition from either a classification society or designer or whatever, uh, there are some defaults that are built into Maestro um, or a, in this case, uh, a generic combatant. Uh, there are a couple other categories. I think these, um, uh, probabilities were based on the profiles in the spectra uh, program, but they can all be overridden and the user can define explicitly exactly uh, what the operating profile might be for the vessel. And they can change, you know, these probabilities for speed and heading can change with uh, increase in sea state. Uh, but basically Maestro will take into account, you know, all of this information and compute the exposure time uh, in each combination of speed, heading, wave height, and modal period 
and use that for the lifetime evaluations. This is sort of an overview of, of how that calculation is done. Uh, we get the hydrodynamic loads, uh, you know, typically from Maestro Wave, although you know, they could be provided from a third party tool. Um, the extreme load analysis will do the, or perform the REOs and statistics for either short or long-term uh, statistics. And, uh, you may only be interested in what, uh, you know, the probably what the probable um, load from a, you know, a three hour storm is, or you may be interested in what the, you know, uh, probable extreme is over the life of the ship. Uh, once it determines what that value is, it'll compute a, an equivalent design wave uh, for use in the structural response. So basically it'll, you know, based on uh, that uh, unit wave load database, uh, it'll compute what the expected lifetime extreme is, but then for purposes of running the actual evaluation, it'll, using that um, uh, selected uh, operating profile, the you know from the the, the uh, speed and heading and uh, wave height modal period, it'll create a an equivalent um, static design wave that will generate the same load. But basically, you you create the the unit wave database by running uh, Maestro Wave. Uh, then within uh, Maestro, the FBA or the ELA module, uh, you've got the uh, the actual FE model available. The, it'll compute the uh, hull girder global loads uh, response amplitude operators, and then we know what the wave spectrum is, typically Brett Schneider for deep water. Uh, whether you're doing the long term or short term, uh, if you do the long term, it'll look at the entire uh, sea scatter diagram, or if it's a short term, it'll just be you know, a single wave height modal period for a given number of hours. Um, it'll uh, compute the response spectrum. And knowing all the operational conditions, it uh, knows the exposure time for each one. So it basically uh, calculates the extreme load for each uh, combination of those speed heading wave height motor periods uh, and determines what the uh, extreme is over the life and then computes the uh, equivalent uh, extreme regular wave. Similarly, uh, that's done in, in the spectral fatigue analysis side. You basically got the same uh, Wave database or unit wave database created, um, but uh, instead now we use an element stress REO that's created, and the response spectrum is now for the uh, element stress rather than the whole girder load. And when we rather than computing the lifetime extreme, it's using Miner's rule um, to sum up the uh, fatigue damage uh, over the life of the ship. So we've got the stress range, stress range PDF as well as the uh, selected SN curves for um, what the fatigue life is, and it'll sum up for on an element by element basis in the entire ship, uh, all of the fatigue damage. 